The World Food Program now warning the risk of famine in Gaza is increasing every single day. The head of the UN's emergency relief agrees and says people in Gaza face the highest levels of food insecurity ever recorded. And Human Rights Watch accusing Israel of using starvation as a weapon of war in violation of the international rules of war. Gazans jumping on aid trucks to get any food they can for themselves and their children. We are dying of hunger. And flooding the few remaining barely functioning hospitals with cases of serious malnutrition. Hospital workers facing the grim reality that sometimes they don't have food to give them or themselves. What else is left when there are homeless children, no schools, no education, no food, nothing? What else is left? We have hunger, we have starvation in some places, and the clock is ticking towards famine. One IDF colonel pointing the blame at aid organizations for people not getting enough food, telling the Times of Israel there is no food shortage in Gaza. As of now, around 200 trucks of humanitarian aid carrying food, water, and medical supplies are getting into Gaza every day. While that may sound like a lot, the U.N. says 500 trucks were going in daily before the war. It's certainly not the first time, even in recent conflicts, that a government has been accused of starving people to win military goals. Starvation has been used as a military tactic going all the way back to ancient times. Romans used starvation to defeat and destroy Carthage in 146 B.C., in the United States Civil War, President Lincoln signed the Lieber Code, which instructed Union soldiers to, quote, starve the hostile belligerent, armed or unarmed. And Adolf Hitler's so-called hunger plan starved millions of people in the Soviet Union during World War II. But it wasn't until 2018 that the U.N. Security Council unanimously and strongly condemned the use of starvation as a tactic of war because of the devastating impact it has on civilians. Of course, many factors can disrupt the food supply to populations, and yet Ukraine, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Yemen, Syria are all facing hunger crises in the middle of conflict. Alex Duvall has studied international famine for four decades. Uh, markets are disrupted, trade is, is disrupted, food production is disrupted. But where we see real risk of famine is where hunger is deliberately used as a weapon of war. And Duvall says the concentration of food insecurity in Gaza is the worst in the last 75 years. There is no instance since World War II that compares with Gaza. There are, and there are instances that are bigger in terms of affecting much more people, much more protracted and therefore killing larger numbers. None of them have inflicted the same level of destruction and brought about the same level of risk of mass death from starvation as the current crisis in Gaza. UNICEF says the war is damaging and destroying access to clean water too. Cases of diarrhea among children there skyrocketing because of this. The reality on the ground looks like this. Desperate parents spending days looking for milk for their newborn. I don't know how he can bear this weather or the living conditions. There's no milk, no water. And hope, too, now in short supply. Cynthia is joining us now. Cynthia, we're so glad to have you here. We know, and we've covered here on this show, that even as the UN's top court wants Israel to get more supplies into Gaza right away, at the same time, we're seeing some countries, including our own, the U.S., is basically suspending funding for UNRWA, which we talked about at the top of this segment yeah. here. So, so what is the path forward here? What have you learned in your reporting about that piece of it? Gosh, I wish I had an easy answer right. for you, Hallie. I mean, essentially, put UNRWA aside for a moment. We know okay. that UNICEF, we know that uh, Save the Children, we know that the World Food Program all say they have resources ready and able to go into uh, Gaza and that they are still being blocked from doing so. Now, 200 trucks a day is not enough. Thing. But as we report in the piece, it, it sounds like a lot until you realize that food insecurity was a problem even before the war. There were 500 trucks going in a day to just keep, you know, people's heads above water prior to war. So the situation is just getting more and more dire. And um, 
you know, these babies, uh, these babies didn't create this war. So hope that we can figure out a way uh, for Israel to feel that they are protecting themselves while at the same time providing much needed food and water to the people who live in Gaza. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.